So for the restorations on the giveaway cars, I've decided to shoot the videos a little bit differently. Um, a lot of the time when I do restos, I work on two and three cars at the same time. Just because it's easier to take them apart and strip them all, all together rather than doing one at a time. Now I'll shoot the videos separate to be able to do individual videos for each car, but for the giveaways, I really wanted to shoot all of these together. Um, so it's going to be a series of videos, and uh, it's the same steps, same process. Uh, for the riveted cars, we're just going to go ahead and drill out the posts, and we'll tap those to accept a screw. And uh, I like to use a, a drill bit that's just about the same size as the rivet uh, to remove the flange that's on the outside. Then we'll use a smaller bit to drill in and thread uh, the small button head screws. For the van, the posts are a little bit smaller, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to tap those. Uh, even if I did, the, the big button head screws on the bottom would look ridiculous. So... As you can see, uh, the base here is not in bad shape. The front wheels, um, that axle is bent pretty badly. If we look at the interior pieces here, this uh, interior plastic is pretty rough. The table's busted off and missing. And uh, I don't know if that's something I can repair or if I might try to just 3D print a replacement for that. To get the glass out, I've also got to drill the inner rivets in there as well. The glass in this, as you can see, is about as rough as the rest of the model is. This is uh, really worn. There seems to be some kind of a residue that's kind of stuck to the outside. The original casting is uh, not in great shape. It's not terrible, and I, I think it's worth trying the Restro on this, but um, it's a little bent, a little off-center, and uh, we've definitely got some issues with these wheels and axles. So. Next step is going to be to uh, remove the little flared out edge on the original axles so that we can remove the wheels and restore the base. Now that we've got the wheels removed off the base, you can see it's in pretty rough shape. And we're going to go ahead and strip this down and repaint it. Um, the base casting, there's not a lot of paint left on this. Um, so this should go pretty quick. And uh, I picked up a tip from uh, Polly over at Fat Guy about uh, just soaking the castings in the stripping agent. And that seems to work really, really well. So for the uh, Lark Wagon, we're going to do the same thing. We'll pry the base off here and pull it apart. The uh, plastics on this, not in bad shape. The tow hook is uh, missing. And I don't know if that's something that I'll try to restore or not. I know they make reproductions, but uh, I don't know that it's that big of a deal on this particular model. The uh, glass on this is a little bit unique because the glass is actually what holds in the um, sliding door on the back of the casting. So it, uh, it's not riveted in, not held in with anything other than just the, the base um, rivet. So here you can see the, the piece that we removed, not in bad shape, it's missing quite a bit of the paint. And the, uh, the original casting, here actually looks to be in really good shape. Um, it's not bent, it's not missing any of the, the pillars or anything. I think that uh, this one is really gonna shine up nice. Um, it's not painted or anything, so I'm gonna try to just wire wheel off uh, some of the, the paint that's on the bottom. Um, we'll do the resto on the wheels and the axles, 
and then I'm going to just try to polish the hell out of this base and see if I can get it really nice and shiny. The first step in trying to get this cleaned up and polished, I've got just one of my very soft wire wheels on my Dremel, and I'm just working it down in between the lettering. Um, I'm probably going to have to use my picks to get some of the, the paint that's down in the lettering, but I'm going to work my way around the model, hit the, the front bumper and the headlights, the rear bumper here, and uh, just try to polish all the oxidation that's on this off get it cleaned up and that's kind of the the first step on the polish and then we'll gradually get finer and eventually we'll use the buffing wheels To do the buffing on these, I use these really nice, soft, um, polishing wheels, and this is what they're meant for. It's it's not the typical wheel that you get in the uh, Dremel multi-tool tip sets. Uh, I order these on Amazon, and I do have the link down in the description to where I get these, but you can see the wheel kind of starts to turn black, and, and that's as it pulls off all of that uh, residue, all that oxidation and everything on the base. And it really does produce a, a really nice, high quality shine. I've been really, really happy with these. I'm not sure who uh, who I picked that up from originally. Um, I, I know I've seen them used on several different channels, but uh, they just absolutely work great. And as you can see, this base is really turning out nice. Um, it's, you know, I, when I do a restoration, there's always that line you want to question. Am I trying to get it back to what it was, factory original? Do I want to take it better than factory? You know, how close do I want to make it to uh, to what it was? And in this case, I'm willing to spend a little extra time to go above and beyond what I think the, the factory would have done. On the little tipper truck here. Uh, I really love working on these metal wheel models just because their construction is so simple. You know, the, the later ones where you got the glass and the plastics and all the different pieces you got to work on, it really puts a lot more work into a restoration. And every now and then I really like the simplicity of some of these older models. You know, you take them apart, you get the, the wheels cleaned up, get the castings repainted, and that's really it. It's a very straightforward process. So um, I looked at how this tailgate is in there, and I think I'm going to try to restore that without taking the, the tailgate off. Uh, on the crimped axles on these, um, I use a little bit different method. Rather than trying to screw them up or cut it off or you know have to re replace them or make new ones, um, I just use a small pair of needle nose pliers and I go opposite the direction of the crimp. And what that does is it squeezes the sides of the metal back together. I end up with kind of a square tip on the end rather than a round. So it, uh, it really is square peg round hole. But um, usually if I can do it right, it gives me just enough wiggle room that I can remove the wheel and pull the axles. So uh, it takes a little finesse. It, it takes a lot of practice. Um, if you don't have the, the hand strength to do that with a pair of needle nose, uh, or if you don't have a pair of needle nose and that method just isn't working for you, this is another method that I've seen used by a couple of the other restorers, and that is to just put it in a small bench vise. Again, it's the same concept, same principle. You're going counter to the direction of the crimp, and you put it in your vise and then just slowly tension that down 
and you'll you'll be able to see the metal move. You'll be able to see that little flange flatten out uh, back into a, kind of a square stock or square peg, and that's usually all it takes to be able to pull the wheel. So here you can see a little effort with the vise. Got almost a square end, and I'm gonna try this just real gentle. Yep, there it comes. So very simple, very straightforward. So now that our van has had about an hour to soak in the stripper, um, I'm gonna take it out, start allowing some of that excess to drip off. And you can see the paint on this is already bubbling. This, uh, this citrus strip that I use works really well and it's, it's pretty safe. I don't have to worry about fumes. Um, I generally don't like to get it on my hands, but if I do, it's not going to burn me. It's not going to hurt me at all. Um, and the nice thing about using this method of the little container with it in is I can pull one model out and drop the next model right into it so I can just keep going. The first step, obviously, in restoring any of the plastics is just to get everything clean. So I like to use a little soapy water, uh, nothing fancy, just a little Dawn dish soap in uh, some warm water. I, I really like using dish soap, especially Dawn, because it's got the grease cutter agent in it. And a lot of the dirt and grime and stuff that gets built up in these things um, tends to, to really come off well with that grease, uh, grease cutter in it. And so it does a good job, it's cheap, and uh, seems to work better than uh, most of the other things that I've tried. Um, once I get all the plastics cleaned up, I'll be able to see really just how scratched up some of these windscreens are and what all exactly I'm going to have to do to try to get them restored. The wheel cleanup is uh, pretty pretty easy. Um, I have found that leaving them on an axle sometimes makes them a little bit easier to hold on to. Uh, when I get just the, the bare wheels on their own, they, they can be a little fiddly and everything's covered in slippery soap anyway. So um, I'll just uh, leave them on an axle so I got something to hang on to. But uh, you can see here the, the glass on the Wagoneer um, looks really pretty darn good. Um, this one I think is going to clean up really nice. After everything gets a good soak in uh, soapy water and a good scrub, I like to do just a rinse in some just plain clear water and then dry everything off so I can finally see what I have to work with. Like most models, the axles on these cars were pretty rusted. Um, they got a little surface rust. Uh, they just use a, a straight steel bar on these, and there's not any paint or any protection, so it's pretty common. And the easiest way, of course, to remove that is just to soak them in a little white vinegar overnight. So it's been about an hour now that I've had this uh, tipper truck soaking in the stripper. And you can see most of the paint is coming off really quite well on this. Uh, I have found on these older models, um, I, I just think that Lesney must have used a slightly different mix of paint because um, 
it, it doesn't respond quite as well as the, the later series models do to the stripper. And usually I end up having to get my brass brush out. Uh, the brush works great. The brass bristles are soft enough that they're not going to scratch the casting. They're going to remove or destroy any of the details. But it gives me something a little more aggressive that I can go after some of that uh, residual paint with. Um, and most of these I do end up doing two soaks uh, in the, the stripper or two, two rounds of trying to get that paint off. And even that, uh, again, whatever the paint that Lesney used back in you know, 1954 um, versus what they used in 1979 um, tended to be a, a much, I, I think it must have been a, a, a much stronger kind of paint um, probably, you know, <laughs> before EPA regulations. And uh, it just, it doesn't come off as well with the strippers um, like the, the recent ones. So this one's definitely going to take a little work. And this is just the first round of stripper on these. You know, made some fair progress, but uh, I'm definitely going to have to go back and soak those a second time. On the Wagoneer pieces here, you can see the same soak and this paint's coming right off. So on our little tipper truck, uh, we're now after three different rounds of stripper, and I'm down to just a few little areas where the paint is really kind of stuck in some of these little niches, these little crannies and nooks back in here. Um, and to remove that, I'm just using one of my uh, little dental pick tools. Um, this is one of the ones that I got from my dentist that was no longer being used on teeth and these seem to work really, really well to uh, get in there. I do want to be careful because this is a, a much harder metal, much harder material. So it, it can scratch the casting and it's possible to, uh, to damage it or to remove some of the details or the body lines. And I don't want to do that. I just want to get rid of all of the, the re residual paint that's there. So here you have it. All of all three of the giveaway cars have been completely disassembled. Uh, we've got all the plastics cleaned up and ready to go, and all of the castings have been paint stripped. Um, we did polish out the base on the Lark Wagoneer. Um, the the VW here, you can see this casting is a little bent, and it's going to take a little bit more work than I had originally anticipated. The Wagoneer, I think, is going to be pretty straightforward. You know, it, it looks really remarkably pretty good shape, and I'm really happy with how that base is coming. Um, all the interior is cleaned up just beautiful, and I don't think I'm going to have to do much, if any, work to the, the windscreen or the wheels. The uh, little tipper truck, this was really a, a pain. This was really a challenge to get that original paint off. And as you can see, kind of down on the sides there, I still got a couple areas. I think I'm going to be able to paint over that. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, but this was really a chore to get this little model stripped down. You know, I, I started out by saying I really like these ones because they're so simple and straightforward. And this one sure was a pain to get to this point. So as always, uh, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like. Don't forget to uh, click that subscribe button. And uh, enter our giveaway. The link's in the description. All you got to do is click it, vote for which one you'd like to have, 
and then go out and follow us on our Facebook page. Join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.